Hey guys, this is David from Worship Online. I've played bass for many great Christian artists such as Lauren Daigle and Elevation Worship. And in my time with them, I've spent a lot of hours in the studio really trying to tweak my bass tone and get the right sound possible. Having good bass tone is extremely important, not just for you as a bass player, but it also helps the band members on stage and the front of house engineer. Bass is a foundational instrument, and so having good bass tone is really important for the mix. And today, I wanted to bring some of my favorite bass direct boxes. These are some of the direct boxes that you'll see at church, at your guitar store, and uh, I just wanted to break these down and kind of show you some good bass tones that you can get out of these. Before we get started, I wanted to tell you about a second video that we're also offering. I'm gonna be talking about my own personal bass pedal board, some of my favorite bass effects, and how to use it in worship songs. So all you have to do is click the link below and submit your email and we'll send it right to you. Now let's begin. Up first, we have the radial passive direct box. This is probably the most common direct box that you'll see. Uh, sound engineers love this thing. It pretty much just gives you a pure tone of your bass. It doesn't color anything. It just gives a really great signal to the front of house engineer so they can kind of tweak your bass tone however it needs to fit in the mix. There's no overdrive, there's no EQ controls. It's really just amplifying your bass signal to front of house. So I'm just gonna play a little bit and just so you can kind of hear what my bass sounds like through this direct box. Right now, I'm just using an Elliott PJ bass. I'm keeping my uh, tone all the way up at 100%. I'm keeping uh, both pickups on and just my volume all the way up. So. Notice how there's kind of just, it's just the bass. It's, there's nothing flashy about it, but what's really helpful in a mix is it doesn't, it just keeps it really simple and really trustworthy. This thing is not gonna break on you. This thing is built like a tank. You can throw it around, it'll still work. So the construction on this is really simple and easy to use. You really just plug your bass into the input and then uh, plug an XLR into the output, into the snake or whatever uh, soundboard you're using. Uh, this is also great if you're running an amp and you don't wanna use the direct out on the amp. You can just take it through the three right here and this will be the direct out for your amp. So now let's hear what this radio sounds like in the context of a song. Up next, we have the Sans Amp Bass Driver DI. This is another really popular pedal for bass players because one of the main features is to emulate a bass cap. That's one of the drawbacks of having a direct box is you kind of lose some of the amp-like feel that many guitar players have in their in-ear mix. Um, and so Sans, the Sans Amp is literally just almost like a, it's a direct box, it's an amp replacement, it sounds really great. Has a this is where you start getting into the direct boxes, changing the color of your bass tone. And when I mean color, it literally that's just a you know a, a way we say it. This this pedal can really affect how your bass sounds. It no longer sounds like just a bass. It sounds like a bass going into something now. And so the settings on this that I have right now, it's pretty pretty straightforward. You have your level control, which just uh, affects uh, the level of your bass. The blend control, the thing that's really cool about this is that you can blend how much of this pedal that you want, or if you wanna, if you wanna tweak back and uh, blend it back, you can have your just standard bass tone. So this is just my bass signal. It's kind of bypassing this whole pedal. And then as we bring the blend knob up, we start blending in the sans amp signal. So now I have it at 100%. As if you notice, it's a little bit darker, a little bit rounded. That's because it's uh, emulating uh, a cabinet. And so uh, with that, 
you can tweak so many things. Uh, right here, this is the new version. The old version doesn't have any mid control, uh, but this one does have some mid control, which is pretty cool. Um, so in the, we have the treble, we got the mid and the bass, we have the presence knob, and then the drive. And a lot of times people use this presence knob as a mid control, and that's when it starts getting uh, really brittle sounding. I've noticed a lot of complaints with people if they uh, try to fix the mids by bringing this up, it actually doesn't affect the mids at all. It just really changes the tone of the drive to give it a more sparkle sound. So, so now I'm bringing in some overdrive. Let's hear what it sounds like with a pick just to get some more gnarly bass tones. Sounds really cool. Now one of the things you want to be careful with is because the mids aren't as present in this direct box, you want to find a way to bring that back because the mids is what really helps bring your bass cut through the mix. And so you have a few uh, mid range options here. You can either bring your mids up, um, you can bring the blend knob back a little bit to get some of your original bass tone, which I think is really cool. That's kind of one of the main features with this thing is how much of your original bass tone do you want in? So let's hear what it sounds like now. So if you notice, some of my, my mid range is back and that really helps the sound engineer that helps the rest of the band hear what your bass tone actually sounds like. So now let's hear what this sounds like in the context of a song. All right, up next, we have the Tone Hammer by Aguilar. This is kind of the Swiss Army knife of the, of the bass direct boxes. Uh, it has a lot of cool features on it, uh, similar to the Sans Amp, but one of the main differences is that it still tries to keep your original bass tone similar to the radial. Uh, with this, we still have our EQ controls, we have our gain knob, uh, and we have a really cool feature that adds another layer of drive to it. Whereas with the Sans Amp, you have one knob and you affect your drive right here. So if this thing is on, your overdrive is on as well. With this, they have a separate circuit for the overdrive. So right now, the tone hammer is on. But the overdrive is not engaged. And so with this, we have a lot of cool control. If we want to have a really good clean bass sound, uh, we can keep it uh, disengaged. Or if we really want some gnarly overdrive, we can engage it and... And you can keep tweaking the overdrive and just adjusting the, your master volume to keep it level. One of the really cool features on this pedal is the EQ section. Obviously it has a bass and treble knob, but one of the cool features is that it has a mid-range frequency knob and a mid-range level. So you can adjust your mids and you can cut or boost them to taste. So for example, if I feel like my bass is not cutting through the mix, I can kind of adjust the mid-range frequency and then boost the level up. So it can completely change the tone of the overdrive. So right now, I'm gonna set my frequency up a little bit and just boost the mids. So now it feels like the tone hammer is really in your face. Right now, I'm gonna cut some of the mids.
It can get that sans amp tone really quickly by cutting some of the mids, giving some more of that amp-like quality back into the pedal. And now, let's hear what this pedal sounds like with a song. Up next, we have the Noble Tube DI. For this direct box, you're gonna notice a lot of differences with this one versus these. This is a tube DI. Uh, it has two preamp tubes in it, similar to what you would find in a bass amp or guitar amp. And what it's uh, doing is giving your bass a really warm tube amp-like sound. If you notice with these, these do not have any tubes in them. These are all circuit-based uh, direct boxes to kind of emulate uh, a tube amp. For this, this is an actual uh, tube direct box to, to give you that sound. And the controls are very simple. It's still built really well. You have a volume knob for the quarter inch output, and you have a bass and treble boosts. And for here, you have uh, a flat uh, EQ, or if you want to have your bass cut at a certain range, you can do that as well if you're using an acoustic guitar or anything like that. A really cool feature about this pedal, and one of the reasons why I love it so much, is that it has a built-in power supply on the side right here, where you can power your pedals on your pedal board. This is a very pedal board friendly uh, tube direct box, and I will say any one of these uh, would be great for any bass pedal board, which is why I chose them today. Um, if you notice, the Noble is actually powering the Tone Hammer uh, I have like a special 18 volt cable right here, and it can also power uh, the Sans Amp as well. And so it kind of saves you from having to buy like a Voodoo Lab power supply or something like that. It has six um, power inputs, so you can power up to six pedals. Um, so let's hear what this sounds like, uh, just the bass. notice there's only a there's just a slight coloring to the bass it's really just trying to keep your bass tone intact as it is but it's just giving some nice warm color to it it's similar to the radio but it just has a little bit more of a warmer sound to it um, and like I said uh, there's EQ controls right here so if you really want to change the EQ of your bass you can do that so let's hear what it sounds like with the bass and treble boosted a little bit If you notice what's really cool is that your mids are still intact even with the bass and treble boosted. So let's hear what this sounds like in context with a song. So as you can tell, there's a wide range of tone between these four direct boxes. And I chose these because these are some of the more common ones that you'll see at church or even online with other bass players posting about them. I just wanted to try to uh, deep dive into these four and make sure that you feel well educated on some of the tones on these. Now let's jump into the second part of this video where I talk about my personal pedal board and some of my favorite effects to use during songs. And if you haven't already, Click the link below and submit your email address so we can send you this video. All right, now let's begin.